Hey, and welcome to The Office Field Guide. My name's Chris, and I'm reviewing every episode of The Office ever. Today, we are looking at episode 14 of the third season of The Office, which is entitled Ben Franklin. This episode was written by Mindy Kaling and directed by Randall Einhorn. It aired first on February 1st, 2007. It was viewed by 10.1 million people, and it currently has an 8.1 out of 10 on IMDb. Okay, and since I can't ever leave anything the same, I've been given trivia questions for quite a while on these field guides. I'm gonna change it up a little bit. Uh, today, instead of me answering the trivia question for you, the first person to answer the trivia question right in the comments is gonna get a shout out in next week's video. So that's how we're gonna play this. Your trivia question for today is, in this episode, Jim mentions three different impersonators that they can hire. One of them is Ben Franklin. Who are the other two people that Jim mentions as potential strippers? And also for the new segment, don't forget to look for the prison mic or the floating Andy somewhere in this episode. I thought I hit it maybe too well last week, but user Lazy Turtle found it no time flat, so I'm gonna make it a little more difficult. If you find them first, you will get a shout out in next week's video. That's two opportunities for shout outs. And with that, let's dig into this episode. No one uh, asked you anything ever. Okay, one of the most jarring things about this episode is that Jenna Fisher clearly has a cold while they were filming, which I think does pair really well with how awkward her character is. I've gotten pretty good at reading the back of Jim's neck. This might be the most cringy Pam episode of the series. Correct me if I'm wrong, I know people have a lot of feelings about Pam, but we saw Angela's armor break last week. Never. And now we get to see some cracks in Pam's facade as well. This scene. Oh no! Oh man, it makes me wish this was a video game and I could force her character to do a barrel roll and escape this situation. Use the barrel roll! But back to the cold, I did catch this. Oh, help the man! Oh no, no! Definitely had a cold. Anyway, after Yvette Nicole Brown's guest appearance last week, I guess we should start a new segment called What's IMDb say? Okay, so the Ben Franklin impersonator is played by Andy Daly. This guy's been in a little bit of everything. And I mean a little bit of everything. He's the proverbial that guy of television comedies over the last two decades. In the Sherverse, he's been in Brooklyn Nine-Nine and The Good Place, but he's also a regular in Blackish, Modern Family, Veep, Reno 911, and also does a ton of voice acting too. He also does a lot of podcasts. I hear him as a guest on a bunch of them. And Jackie DeBaton portrays the stripper in this episode. I don't personally recognize her from anything, but her IMDb is extremely long. And really what's most bizarre is that I grew up about 20 minutes away from her hometown. And I know that because I actually dated a girl from that town when I was in middle school. So that's weird. I asked Miss DeBaton for a comment and she's yet to reply. One thing I have noticed in filler episodes in season three, it's a great opportunity for callbacks. This episode has a lot of them. The George Foreman grill. Is it the same grill you grilled your foot on? No. Yes, oh, but I got all the gross. foot off of it. There's this callback to Roy and Pam's relationship. Roy was supposed to pick the band, but he's concentrating more on the bachelor party now. I'm not really into strippers. You know what I find sexy? Pam's art. There's a casino night callback with Kevin. I won the 2002 $2,500 No Limit Deuce to Seven Draw Tournament at the World Series of Poker in Vegas. The game is No Limit Deuce to Seven Low Ball. Blinds 25, 50, nickels are worth 10, dimes 25, and quarters 50, nothing wild. And the infamous poster. It makes me feel like the babies are the true artists, and God has a really cute sense of humor. Oh, I love your poster. Thank you. And speaking of the poster, Oscar is oddly missing from this episode with no explanation. And coincidentally, with the subject matter at hand, we're also missing Toby in this episode, which I thought was just an excuse for the writers to do their thing, but they actually did their thing. It's just the explanation didn't make it into the final cut of the episode. It is in a deleted scene. Look, Toby, why don't you just go home today? Take the afternoon off. See you tomorrow. You can't just go. Yes, you can. No. Oh. I have to make it look like I tried, right? But with that, let's dive into the deeper meaning. 
why don't you explain this to me like I'm five? Okay, I've been thinking about this for a while. Let's put these puzzle pieces together. We've got a Ben Franklin impersonator. Franklin was a legendary statesman and innovator, as well as having a reputation of being sexually promiscuous. Well, that is a gray area of my life. We have a stripper who teaches Michael a moral lesson. Secret secrets are no fun. Secret secrets hurt someone. We've got the Jim Pam Karen triangle. We've got a lot of gender role and sexual orientation jokes. A G-A-I, a gay. Who wants some man meat? I do, I want some man meat. Huh? Michael, the white would like your man meat. Well then my man meat, he shall have. An hour long shower with guys. As well as this great line. You know, separate but equal. So that's what that means. But I was honestly really stumped here, maybe for the first time since doing this series, I literally had no idea after watching this episode three or four times. I mean, there's these little messages here and there, but it seemed like I was just missing something. That was until I was doing some research on Ben Franklin and I found something called the Ben Franklin effect. I was intrigued, so I started reading about it. The concept is based on something that Franklin wrote about way back when, and the effect is pretty simple. It's the idea that a person will be more inclined to perform a favor for you if they've performed a favor for you in the past. In his writings, he used an example of a rival statesman who he was often at odds with. One day, Franklin asked to borrow a book, knowing that this guy had quite the book collection. Franklin returned the book a week later with a thank you note, and then Franklin noted the next time that they were in person, this statesman was very talkative, and from then on, this guy was always ready to serve and back Franklin up whenever he needed anything, and they even became good friends. And Franklin, you're really kind of a sleazebag. Which I thought was really interesting, but I didn't really see how it connected to this episode until I dug a little deeper with this Ben Franklin effect and saw the connection between this and the psychological concept called cognitive dissonance. I'm no psychologist, so I'll explain it the way I understand it. Dissonance is a fancy word for disharmony. Like this would be dissonance. Wanna hear the most annoying sound in the world? <laughs> so the theory of cognitive dissonance is that when a person's actions or potential actions are not in alignment with their perceived beliefs, ideals, or values, disharmony occurs. Or in other words, when your actions don't match up with your beliefs, it can stress the crap out of you. Guys! 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 Which, if you watch this episode in preparation for this field guide, this concept's all over the place. Michael didn't think of the repercussions of having a stripper at work at all. Once this behavior came in conflict with his beliefs, he had an epiphany. I had an epiphany. It wasn't until Michael cleared his conscience did this dissonance or disharmony clear up. You are the best GD girlfriend in the world. Do you know that? You are. Jim seems to be clearly stressed from his dissonance as he knows who he wants to be with, but he's so far down this road with Karen, he just seems to be willing to deal with the stress. And the night before that, and uh, every night for the last five nights. We also see it with Pam when she's questioned. There seems to be dissonance, as she has a lot she wants to say to Karen, but the nuance of her situation has her tripping all over her words. What are you sorry about? Um, what? What are you sorry about? Nothing. I was just thinking of something else. And for the love of Pete, this scene stresses me out and makes my chest sink into itself with how awkward it is. But what makes this one so awkward? Is it just Pam's bumbling about rim cycles? I think it's the disharmony that both of these characters are experiencing by their brains telling them one thing and their behavior following another. Gotta get your rim cycle going with the whole sleeping better than not. And the Ben Franklin impersonator seems to be a good example of this as well. The impersonator only breaks character to follow the urge to get with Pam. I'm sensing a little electricity right here. Didn't Ben Franklin have syphilis? <laughs> yes. Otherwise, he stays true to his beliefs. That is not the real Ben Franklin. I am 99% sure. Care for a piece of chocolate? Chocolate? Where did you acquire it? That is a delicacy in the Amazon, but it has not yet been imported to the United States. So what's the message? Well, Festinger, the psychologist who first proposed this theory, suggested that some humans will either simply change their beliefs to resolve the stress, 
or they will change their actions to match their beliefs. So I guess the message is really just open to interpretation. It really makes you wonder how Ben Franklin can become president, but someone like Elizabeth can't. Or I don't know, maybe this whole episode was just filler stuffed to the brim with awkward and uncomfortable situations. I had a very different understanding as to what prima nocta meant. But with that, let's dish out some dundies. And then I gotta get him to the dundies. All right, the dundie for officially hitting rock bottom goes to Pam Beasley. <laughs> My name is Gordon. Oh. And the dundie for the best joke of the episode goes to Melora Harden. So you don't want to end our relationship? I'm closer to firing you. That's so sweet. I love that line. It cracks me up every time. But with that, let's rate this thing. What gives what? What gives you the right? All right, and this is normally when I do the trivia. Again, if you knew the trivia, leave it in the comments. So for the cold opening, this one gets a three out of five for me. I love Michael and Dwight's video projects. It's a series wide joke. It never gets old. This cold opening does get a bit awkward though. Thanks, Pam. And as for episodes we were robbed of, I think we were robbed of Michael and Dwight going to the store to buy this bra because I don't know who else would have given it to them. That would have made for a great bit. I also love when Michael says this. Yesterday, I was scraping some gunk off my wall sockets with a metal fork, and I gave myself the nastiest shock. Interestingly enough, I was putting an outlet into my new office slash studio yesterday and shocked the crap out of myself. So be careful out there, folks. As I've alluded to, I really don't like this episode that much. It is slow and methodical, and the funniest moments are at the end of this one. There's a lot of wit and thought put into this 22 minutes, but there's also a lot of unredemptive cringe, which is fair enough. It is The Office after all. Maybe early in season two, this episode would have shined, but it feels bogged down and boring compared to its neighbors in season three. I'm gonna give this one a two out of five. Is she hot? back kind of but that's just what i think about ben franklin what do you think about this episode the conversations half the reason i do this channel in the first place so i definitely want to hear your thoughts in the comments also don't forget to leave the timestamp of the easter egg if you found it even if you're not first leave it in the comments to proudly declare that you found it and also the trivia question did you know the answer to the trivia question i don't know i said i was going to make this one harder i don't know if it really was um, guys, the channel's growing, and I really appreciate everybody who's watching, who's sharing this content around the web, leaving positive comments. It's, it's awesome. And if you're new, consider subscribing, because next week we're going to be taking a look at the Phyllis's Wedding episode, which I actually have some great stuff from a Robert Schaefer interview that I never released as part of that video. So I'm looking forward to that. I hope you are. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.